just thank you for this morning. Uh, Lord, you are so big. And we thank you for your bigness. And it's bigger than, bigger than just like that song said, bigger than anything. Uh, God, we thank you for that. Lord, this morning, um, just let the Holy Spirit fill our hearts. Fill this place. Let us be moved by you. And Lord, uh, let us let us hear exactly what you want to hear as Corey brings your word this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Have a seat. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody. I'm going to try to scoot back a little bit because I keep cutting myself off and I watch the video. So, Adam, I'm trying. It's good. Good, good to see you. Uh, welcome to Beecher Island. Beecher Island is an independent, non-denominational, Jesus-loving, Bible-preaching church. I say it every Sunday because I believe it. I believe that we are all about God's Word, and that's where I want to be. I want to be about His Word, and I believe that so much that I tell you that if you think I'm preaching God's Word wrong, come and talk to me. Let me know, because I want to be about Him and His Word, and be right in it. And so I'm going to tell you this morning, we're going to get right after it because we're going to try to chunk out another part of John chapter 13. And so if you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 13. Um, there, is, there is a lot going on in John chapter 13. And we, we've talked a lot about it. We, we've uh, dealt with some stuff that pretty deep. I told you, though, we'd come back to some stuff that's pretty deep. So we might be doing that today. Uh, we're going to tackle some stuff today that not many tackle. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. John chapter 13, when read from the King James Version, I think is very poetic. I think that there's a lot to John chapter 13 and just the way that the King James Version translates what Jesus says. And so, I'm going to read from the King James Version this morning. Please have grace on me. <laughs> um, I read from it often at home, but I don't read a lot out loud from the King James Version because of the these and thous, but in that, it's what makes John chapter 13 beautiful when we read it from the King James Version. Uh, I'm going to share from a Bible this morning. I'm going to read from a Bible that was actually my grandma's Bible. It was given to my grandma on May 1st, 1947. And, and I'm blessed enough to have my grandma and grandpa's Bibles. Um, grandma's still alive, but uh, I, I have her first Bible. Uh, and this is it. And she has made all of her notes in it. But it's kind of fine print. So we're going we're gonna to try this morning. But before we do that, let's go to heaven prayer. Father God, I thank You for this morning. I thank You for Your Word. I thank You for Your love. I thank You for Your compassion, for, for dying for us, for giving us life. It's all in You. It's all in You. Nothing else. You are the way, Jesus, just as You tell us. And I, I pray that we take that seriously. I pray that we take it to heart. I pray that we see that and know that, that it's all You. We thank You for that. And I just pray this morning that Your Word resonates in us. I, I pray that Your Word moves us. I pray that it's, that it's only Your Word that people hear today. And if, Lord, I mess up and say anything that's not of You, Lord, I pray that it, is, it, is, it just falls on deaf ears. Lord, I thank You that we have Your Word so readily available. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Before I start reading, I want us to remember what John said, why he wrote. It's so important as we work through these chapters to remember that John said in John chapter 20, verse 31, but these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you'll have life in His name. Let's keep that in mind as we read chapter 13. We're going to read the whole thing. So, stick with me. Now before the feast of the Passover, Jesus knowing that His hour was come, that He should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved His own that were in the world, He loved them unto the end. <clears throat> and during supper, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Issachar, Simon's son, to betray Him, 
Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he came forth from God and goeth unto God, raiseth, raiseth from supper and layeth aside his garments. And he took a towel and girded himself. Then he poureth water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe with them with the towel where he was girded. So he cometh to Simon Peter, he saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt understand hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter say unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus say, saith unto him, He that is bathed needeth not saved to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. For he knew him that should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and sat down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me teacher and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye also should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, a servant is not greater than his Lord, neither one that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, blessed are ye if you do them. I, seek not, uh, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen, but that the Scripture may be fulfilled. He that eateth my bread lifted up his heel against me. From henceforth I tell you before it comes to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am He. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whomever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. When Jesus had thus said, He was troubled in the Spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. The disciples looked, one on another, doubting of whom he spake. There was at the table reclining in Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him and saith unto him, Tell us who it is whom he speaketh. He leaning back as he was on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus therefore answered, He it is for whom I shall dip the sop and give it, it him. So when he had dipped the sop, he taketh and giveth to Judas, the son of Simon Issachar. And after the sop, then entered Satan into him. Jesus therefore saith unto him, What thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what, for what intent he spake this unto him. For some thought because Judas had the bag that Jesus said unto him, Buy what things we, need, we have need of for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. He then, having received the sop, went out straightway, and it was night. When therefore he was gone out, Jesus saith, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. And God shall glorify him in himself, and straightway shall he glorify him. <coughs> little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, you cannot come. So now I say unto you, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, even as I have loved you, that ye, ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? Jesus answered, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why can I not follow thee even now? I lay down my life for thee. Jesus answereth, 
Wilt thou lay down thy life for me? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. <laughs> what a mouthful. But what an amazing depth of, uh, of God's word laid out to us. It, 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 if you said, what did you just say? It's okay. It's okay. I may have said that too. And so we're going to dig in. We've already talked a lot about it. Uh, um, and we're going we're gonna, to um, we're gonna deal with some that we've, we've passed over. As I read over this and read over this this week, just as Jesus said in verse 21, I feel the same. Troubled. Troubled. Jesus said, I'm troubled. Troubled by Judas, just as Jesus was. But yet overjoyed by what the Lord lays out to us. Overjoyed by what's laid in the Scripture for us. I'm troubled by Judas because of the choice that he made. I'm troubled by Judas not choosing Jesus and in turn choosing the devil. But not just that, I'm also troubled by some of the views that are out there about Judas. And what people, people say about him. I told you a couple weeks ago that we're going to come back to verse 2. We're going to come back to it today. We're going to deal with verse 2. And, and um, I really struggle with it. But that's okay. We're going, to, we're going to talk through it. There's a couple verses that directly talk about the devil in chapter 13. And not just that, but they talk about the devil having influence on a person's heart. And it talks about the devil entering into a person. It troubles me. It troubles me to the core. And you know what? When you start digging into these couple of verses, there's not much about them. You start digging into commentaries and they're kind of like, hey, hey, I'm not touching that. <laughs> they leave it alone. But why? Why do they leave it alone? I say, because it troubles them. It troubles them to the cold. We have to deal with it. It's part of God's Word and it's truth. It's reality. It's real. And we have to address it. We have to look at it. You see, uh, we know that Judas was not clean. We talked about that already. When, we talked about, when Jesus was talking to Peter in verse 10, He said, you are clean, but not all of you are clean. And so He was setting the stage. Hey, Peter, you're saved. You've confessed to Me. You've come to Me. You are Mine. But Judas, you are not clean. He set the stage here for us. He, he was talking about Judas in this, and, and, and he was saying, Judas, at this point, your heart is not for me. We have some other verses in the book of John that we have to add to this. John chapter 6, verses 70 and 71 also talk about this. Also talk about Judas. And his betrayal. John chapter 6 verse 70 and 71 says this. Jesus answered them. Did I myself not choose you? The twelve and yet one of you is a devil. <clears throat> now he met Judas the son of Simon Iscrat. For he one of the twelve was going to betray him. We need to notice something in this. Jesus calls him a devil. He, he's not saying that Judas is the devil. He's saying he's a devil. His, his actions and his heart are representing the devil. And that's what he's saying. He's laying that out to us. You see, Jesus continues to try. This is what I want us to get. Judas, Jesus continues to try to get Judas to come to him. He's trying this whole time to get Judas to see the light. He kept on telling the disciples that one of them was going to betray them. He kept telling them. But Judas would never change his heart for Jesus. Would change his view there. And I want us to see that that is where the difference is. It's where the difference is, and it's why the door was open for the devil to enter into Judas. I want to back up to verse 2 for a minute, though. I want to back, back up to verse 2 in John chapter 13, and it says this And supper being ended, 
The devil having now put into the heart of Judas Issachar, Simon's son, to betray him. I'm going to share my opinion with you on this. And, I, and I'll try to make sure that when, when, I, when I'm speaking of my own understanding of this that you know that. Uh, and, and, and this is my opinion here. Uh, at this point, Judas could have absolutely still chose Jesus. At this point, he still could have chose to, to follow Jesus and had life. Each one of us have the devil trying to persuade us. Each one of us have the devil trying to persuade our hearts and, and affect our flesh and affect our minds. Always trying to put stuff on our heart. But listen, it's a choice whether we listen to it or we don't. It's a choice whether we, we, we follow through with it or we don't. It's a choice to whether allow the devil to work on our heart or not. Every time it happens, we can choose Jesus or we can choose the devil. But it's our choice. It's nobody else's choice in there. We can choose to love or we can choose to hate. We can choose to comfort or we can choose to ignore. We can choose to have grace or we can choose to, to hold a grudge. But it's your choice. It's your choice. And Judas continued to choose the devil. Now, I want to be clear on this. I am not saying that if you have confessed Christ and are saved, we're in the same boat as Judas here in a little bit. Okay, I'm not saying that if you are clean, as Jesus calls it a little bit earlier with Peter, if you are clean, if you are saved, this is not going in and out of salvation. That's not what we're talking about. Judas was not clean. He was not saved. Okay, but it doesn't stop the devil from working on our hearts too. Just as he was working on Judas's heart. The, the devil still tries to work on us. But it's our choice to deny him. Pick up the cross and follow him daily. It's our choice. It's our choice. But see, let me get back to verse 27. And 27 says, And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then, then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest do quickly. This verse reads. If I could take one verse out of the Bible, it would be this one. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I'm just going to be honest with you. It wrecks me. See, Judas had opportunity after opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as the Christ, as the Son of God, and he didn't. He had that choice, he had that opportunity. He had walked with Jesus and was part of the twelve for three years. He, he, was, he was with him and over and over again, Jesus gives him the opportunity to see that he is the Christ, the Son of God. He, he gave him so much opportunity. And if Judas would have believed that, he could have had life. He could have absolutely had life, but Judas never made that choice. You see, there are those that say, though, that Judas didn't have a choice in the matter. That he didn't, didn't have opportunity. But they say that because of verse 18. Verse 18 says, I do not speak of all of you. I know the ones I have chosen. But it, it, but it is that the Scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats my bread has lifted up his heel against me. They say that Judas was chosen for this. They say that Judas was chosen because it says, I know the ones I have chosen. But, but that's not what Jesus is meaning here. That's not what he's saying. He, he said, I have chosen the twelve of you and I know every one of your hearts just as he knows your heart. Just as he knows my heart. He said, I've chosen. I know your heart. I think we have to keep in mind that Judas was a friend of Jesus. I think we paint him in this picture once we get to this point. That we, we paint him in this picture of a person that was kind of an outcast of the twelve. No, he wasn't. He was a friend. If we go to Psalms 41.9, I'll just read it to you. Psalms 41.9 says this. Even my close friend, someone I trusted, 
one who shared my bread has turned against me. Even his close friend. He was Jesus' close friend. And Judas was not chosen for destruction in this. And that's what people want to say. That Judas was chosen for destruction and he was fulfilling prophecy and that's just the way it is. I can't go there. I can't find it in the Scripture. I can't, I can't get there. You see, because you have to go to 2 Timothy. And I want you to turn there with me. 2 Timothy 2. 2 Timothy 2. Uh, I put a lot of emphasis on this Scripture. But I'll tell you what, my, my deal is always, always, always find three Scriptures. And I want you to have three Scriptures and 20 verses before, 20 verses after to back up what we're trying to say about a Scripture. And this Scripture, I put it pretty heavy on here. Okay, and, and, and we can find some others, but because of time, I'm just going to read this one to you. 2 Timothy 2, 19 through 21 is where we're going to be. 2 Timothy 2, 19 through 21. It says this, Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are His. And let everyone, listen, everyone who names the name of Christ depart from inequities. And then it goes on, verse 20, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, which is good, but also wood and clay. Bad. That's what it's saying. There, there's bad people. Some for honor and some for dishonor. But listen. Therefore, if anyone, whosoever, anyone, whosoever, all. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the later, from the bad, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Amen, amen. And if you call on Christ, you are His. You are His. And it scares me when we, when we paint a picture that no, we don't have a choice in it. Because if Judas doesn't have a choice in it, you know what? Maybe you don't have a choice in it. Maybe you don't have a choice in it. Not true. Not true. You have a choice in the matter. You have a choice to choose Jesus Christ or not. But it's your choice. And I don't want anybody to ever tell you that it's not your choice. Because it's not true. It's not biblical. You see, Judas chose to be the wooden clay. He chose to be of evil. He chose to be dishonorable. And in so choosing, he opened the door for the devil to enter into him. That's what happened. I don't like it. But it's true. And it's still truth today. It's still truth today. I'll be the first to say I struggle with it. And I... I don't want the devil to be in anybody. I want Christ to be in you. I want Christ to be in all my enemies. I'm... Man, I... Because if the devil's in you, there's only one choice for you. That's my struggle. The truth is we can either choose to be full of the Holy Spirit by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord and believing in our hearts that God has raised Him from the dead. And it says you will be saved. But if you don't choose that, it's choosing the devil. Maybe you don't make that choice. But if you don't choose Christ, then you're choosing the opposite. I don't want to say opposite. He's not the opposite. You're choosing the devil. You're opening that door just as Judas did. I pray that everybody in here chooses Christ. You see, John 3.16 sums it all up for me in this choice matter. We all know it says, For God so loved the world that He sent His one and only begotten Son, that whosoever, 
It says whosoever. That's anyone. Anyone, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whoever confesses Him, whoever confesses Him will be saved. John 20, verse 31, But these things are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And that believing that, you will, you will, you will, you will have life in His name. Amen, amen, and right. Ah. Uh, we're going to move on from the devil stuff, all right? I'm all worked up now, but we'll, we'll move on. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it there, and we'll deal with it. And if you have any questions about it, please come and talk to me. If you disagree with my opinion, come and talk to me. It's okay. We'll, we'll dive into God's Word, and, and we won't be about opinions. We'll be about His Word. So if you disagree with that, if you, if you want to talk more about it, come and talk to me. But let's get back to some good stuff. In all of this, Jesus was preparing His disciples. He was preparing His disciples uh, for, for what was to come. What was to happen. And, and, and uh, He was proving to His disciples His deity. And in turn, He's proven to us His deity. And that's why Jesus said in verse 13, From now on, I'm telling you before it comes to pass, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am. I bet your Bible says, I am He. Get rid of the italicized He, because that's an added word, and capitalize I am. Amen. Because Jesus, Jesus of the New Testament is Jehovah of the Old. So you can have it in your Bible that says, I am. Believe that I am. Okay, it comes back to your choice. Your choice. Believe that I am. And in that, Jesus is proving. He's proving the prophecy that's been laid out. And He's proving in that His deity. He's proving His deity over and over. And Jesus knew what, Ju what Judas was going to do. And in knowing what He was going to do, He, he prepares the disciples. He prepares them so they won't stumble. They won't fall. They won't doubt. And so He, he gives these words of encouragement. Verse 20, verily, verily, focus, focus, right? Eyeballs, we've talked about it, right? Focus on what I'm saying is what Jesus is saying to them. I say unto thee, he that receiveth whomsoever I send receiveth me. And he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. And if you just said what? It's okay. <laughs> so did I. Because what was just laid out there? What did Jesus just say in this? What do you mean that was a word of encouragement? It is. It's a word of encouragement. Uh, Jesus was saying they needed to remember that they were going to be on a divine mission. That they, after this, they're headed out on a divine mission, and, and they were so closely, they were to be so closely identified with Him that to receive them was the same as receiving Him. And so, in that, it, uh, those who receive Christ for us as a church, as, a, as believers, those who receive Him, God the Father. In that we can find comfort. We can, we can find comfort by our close link with God the Son and God the Father. That, that's where we, where we find this encouragement for them. And that's what he's saying. If you, if you accept me, you accept the Father. And know that if you accept me and you accept the Father, we are in you and we are with you and we are journeying with you. And we can know that too. And I will comfort you is what he's saying. When we choose Jesus, we can know that we are a child of God. And just as I read in class, but it's a, a scripture that I've just been uh, allowing to pour into me this week. It's 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, and 4. And, and, and it just has had such an impact on me this week. But it says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Amen, amen. I'm going to just ask you, and you don't have to raise your hand, but I pray you took my challenge on last week to wash the feet of somebody inside this church and to wash the feet of somebody outside this church. Now, not literally, but spiritually, and 
Maybe, literally. <laughs> so I hope you took it on. If you didn't do it this week, all right? Wash somebody's feet. Wash somebody's feet. But man, the God of comfort. And that's what Jesus was telling His disciples. He was telling them, and in turn, telling us about our divine mission. I'm there to comfort you. I'm there to journey with you. I'm there to walk alongside you. And when you face affliction, look to me. Look to me. And now we get to where Jesus predicts His betrayal. His betrayal, I guess I should say. Verse 21, When Jesus had thus said, He was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, we're there again, right? Focus, focus, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked on one another, doubting of whom He spake. The Lord was troubled with this. The Lord was greatly troubled with, with what was about to take place. He, he, but you know what? Again, it seems like he was given the betrayer another opportunity. Another opportunity to confess. And he's saying, hey, one of you are going to betray me. I know who it is, but listen, here's your chance. He could abandon his evil plan. He could come to him. And without exposing him directly, the Lord reveals his knowledge that one of the twelve is going to do this. Yet it still didn't change Judas' mind. The rest of the disciples did not suspect Judas either. That they were surprised that one of their own would do such a thing. It's sad to say, but we see it too often in church today. The least expected. Betraying Christ and in turn betraying the church. It happens way too often today. So church, I'm just going to tell you, every time choose Christ. Every time choose Christ. When you're faced with affliction, choose Christ. When I wrong you, because I'm going to choose Christ. Please, please choose Christ. Because we're wrong each other. There's no way around it. But please choose Christ. But once Jesus told the disciples, and they start looking around the room like... <laughs> I have this picture in my head of them all reclined, right? Jesus just told them, one of you is going to betray me. Can you see him? It's not me. It must be you. Not, don't look at me. Stop looking at me. It's, it's you, right? Like, they're standing here. But then we have this amazing interaction between John, Peter, and Jesus. Hey, and I'm going to, we're going to read it, but I want you to know but John, as the author, never addresses himself as John. He always addresses himself as the one whom Jesus loved. So when you hear that, when you read that, know that it's John. John the author. And so we're in verse 23. 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples, one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. It's John. Simon Peter therefore beckoned him that he should ask who it should be of whom he spake. He then lying on Jesus' breast saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Issachar, the son of Simon. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest do quickly. Again, I have this picture in my head. Jesus is reclined at the table. John is laying on him, his head's resting on his midsection. I think Peter's probably sitting maybe right beside him or somewhere in there. And after Jesus says it, Peter's like, John, hey, hey, ask him. Ask him, who is it? Come on! The suspense is killing me, right? Like, he's, he's telling him, hey. He nods at him. He, he, he's trying to get him to ask him. And so then John asks him. John asked Jesus, well, who is it? And I believe Jesus whispered to him. Because we read on that none of the rest of the, none of the other disciples knew who it was. We know that afterwards that they think that he's going to go spend money. <laughs> so I think he whispers to John. And he, and he says, he it is to whom I shall give song. When I have dipped it. John's the only one that knows now. 
even though Peter gave him the head nod, hey, Peter didn't get the, get the knowledge. We know that at this point the devil had entered Judas now. He had entered into Judas and, and Jesus tells him, go do what you got to do. We know that um, before though the devil entered into his heart, we know that verse 2, that the devil had... Before G the devil entered into Judas, we know that he put something on his heart. He, he laid it on his heart to be evil. And at first it was just merely a suggestion from the devil. But the problem is, is that Judas entertained it. Judas entertained this suggestion, and then he liked it. And then he agreed to it. And now the devil took control of it. And that's why the door opened. Jesus, knowing the betrayer was fully determined now, the Lord told him, go and do it quickly. But I want you to know in, the, in this, it is not, in no way, shape, or form is, is Jesus encouraging Judas to go do evil. He's not. He's simply expressing sorrowful resignation. I truly believe that. And then we get to verse 28. Now, no one... Now no one of those reclining at the table knew for what this purpose he had said this to them. For some were supposing because Judas had the money box that Jesus was saying to him, buy the things we need, we have need for for the feast, or else that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel, he went out immediately, and it was night. The detail that's put at the end of this verse is uh, overwhelming for me. And it was night. It was not only night literally, but it was night spiritually for Judas. It was night spiritually for Judas, a, a night of gloom and remorse that would never end. Listen, it's always night when a person turns their back to Jesus. It's always night for them. When, when somebody turns their back to Christ, the Son of God, and does not confess them, it is night for them. And let me just say, if you are in the dark, I want you to hear me right now. I want you to hear me right now that if you are in the dark, that Jesus is the light. Jesus is the light of life. And in Him there is life. And it's only in Him that there is life. You see... Uh, This gift of life is given freely. There was a cost to it. But that cost has already been paid. See, it's your choice. It's your choice to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead or not. It's your choice, though. It's your choice to be saved or not. But let me just say, man, why not choose Christ? Why not choose Him? Because if you don't, you may get the same as Judas. And uh, I don't say that to scare you, but I say that to let you know that it's your choice. And, and mom or dad can't make it for you. Grandma and grandpa can't make it for you. I can't make it for you. Nobody in your life can make that choice for you. It's yours. It's your choice to have them and make it or, or not. But it's yours. But listen, if you're making that choice today, what a glorious day it is. What a glorious day it is if you're making that choice today. And if you're making that choice today, I want to pray with you. I want to talk with you. I want to journey with you. And if you have made that choice, but you've not been baptized, why not? Why not? We're going to have some opportunities coming up here on the 20th and the 27th. We're going to have this baptistry full. 
And if you want to be baptized, because if you want to put your stake in the ground and say, yes, Jesus is my Lord, and I don't care what anybody thinks of me, I don't care what anybody says of me, I am a child of God. That's what a baptism is. A baptism is saying to the world that you have a Savior. If you don't believe that, I will just tell you from experience, I've never seen more fighting over baptism. If you just confess them, it's pretty quiet, right? It's here. But if you get in that water, it's here, right? And man, if your family, if your friends, or anybody else doesn't think that, that you should be baptized, guess what? They're going to tell you. Because it offends them. Because you are making a bold statement by stepping in the water. So let me encourage you. If you haven't been baptized, the 20th or the 27th, come talk with me. Uh, let's, let's, get, let's do it. So I'm going to invite the music team up. Jesus was preparing His disciples. Jesus was, was preparing them for a journey. The journey we know. Walking with Christ. With the Holy Spirit in us. And he was trying to tell them, hey, look. There's some bad stuff that's about to happen. And we're going to get to it. But I want you to know. That I am still Christ. The Son of God. I want you to know that I am still. Son of God. Son of man. 100% God, 100% man. But I'll lead you in it all. Now listen, we've talked about the devil quite a bit today. And um, the truth is, the devil works on our heart. The truth is, is that the devil is always going to try to work on our hearts. Whether we confess or we don't confess, Jesus, he's going to work on our heart. Let me just tell you, you don't stand alone. You don't stand alone in the devil trying to persuade you. You don't stand alone in the devil trying to, to, to make your flesh do things that it wants to do. If you're feeling the pressures of the devil weighing down on you, I want to pray with you. I want to lift you up because you know what? In the power of Christ, we can stomp the devil out. That's right. In the power of Christ, we can shuck him off. We can tell him, you have no power in me because of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to stomp you out now, son. So I want to pray with you. Because in the power of Christ, we can do that. And what a blessing that is. And if you confess Christ, I want you to know that. That you don't have to let the devil work on you. You can let him go. And say, away from me, you evil doer. If you need prayers this morning, I'll pray with you. If you're confessing Christ, I want to pray with you. If you've got heavy burdens weighing you down, I want to pray with you. Don't let the devil hold you in your seat out there as we stand and sing here in just a minute. Don't let him hold you there. If you need prayers, come and get them. We want to pray with you. We want to lift you up. That's what we're here for. So if you want to do that, come and pray with me as we stand and sing. Let's go to him in prayer. Father God, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your love. I thank you that... That you give us a choice. Because you want to know that we love you. You want to know that we come to you. You want to know that, that we do say you are our all in all. And Lord, I pray that we know that you are our everything. And that in you, the devil has no power whatsoever. No power at all. And Lord, I pray that we stomp him out. I pray that we don't let him have any effect on our heart or mind or flesh. We stomp him out. We don't take that, that suggestion and, 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 and think about it or, or like it or allow it to be. But we snuff it out right away. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you. And Lord, when we do fall, when we do, when we do 
allow the old devil to work on us, you forgive us. You, you forgive us. You say you're not stuck in that. Come here. I'll clean you off. Because in me, you're white as snow to the Father. Thank you for that. Thank you, thank you. And I pray that if anybody's here struggling, struggle with, with the devil working on their heart, that they seek prayer, that they come and seek you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing. If you need prayers, please go for it.
some of us, it was uh, it was all there, that's for sure. God, uh, you have more power. And Lord, we can tap into that power just by knowing you. God, I just pray for anyone who, for everyone who, who would feel the devil trying to mess around with our hearts, mess around with our lives. Lord, we can just choose you. We can dive into you harder. That we can hit our knees and just uh, know that you have us in the palm of your hand. Thank you for sending your son to die for us on that cross and be raised again so we can have life. God, that we can live right now and have, have abundant life because of you. God, this morning I just I just thank you so much for your message and your word. Lord, I just pray that uh, that message moved others in this place too. Amen. And God, that we can just come closer to knowing you because of it. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this week that's about to uh, that started, Lord. And let us recognize you as we go through it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.